Hi, I'm Gino with GSI Sweet Care Managed Services Team. Today I'm going to be providing a brief overview of NetSuite's cross-subsidiary item fulfillment and cross-charges functionality. Cross-subsidiary item fulfillments allows your organization to fulfill orders from any location within your NetSuite environment, regardless of which subsidiary the location belongs to. Common scenarios for the cross-subsidiary item fulfillments are fulfilling orders where you may not have inventory in the location belonging to the subsidiary where the orders was placed. However, you have plenty of inventory available in locations that belong to related subsidiaries. In our demo today, we have a sales order that was placed by Wayne Enterprises to a subsidiary DC distribution group in the location of Justice Tower. If we look at the item lines for this order, we'll notice that the, custom, the subsidiary actually doesn't have any inventory available to fulfill the customer sales order. But we do know that our related subsidiary, Marvel Supplier, has plenty of inventory for, to fulfill this customer's order. So what we'll do now is we'll edit the sales order, and we'll update the location where we want to fulfill this order from. In this case, we're going to fulfill it from Avenger Tower, which is within the subsidiary Marvel Supplier Co. After we update the line, we'll just confirm and we'll save the sales order. Now that we've updated the sales order to a location that has plenty inventory available, we'll go ahead and we'll fulfill the sales order. We want to mark this order item fulfillment as shipped immediately. We'll update for the quantity that we're, we're shipping. And we'll save the sales order, the item fulfillment record. Let's take a look at the GL impact for this item fulfillment. From the GL impact, you'll see where NetSuite recognizes cost of goods sold and reduces the inventory value. You'll also notice that the subsidiary and location where cost of goods sold is recognized is for the subsidiary where the order actually shipped from, not the subsidiary where the order was originally placed. Now that we fulfilled the order, We'll go back to the sales order and we'll build the customer for this order. The invoice opens. You'll see that the invoice is for the original subsidiary where the order was placed as well as the original location. There's nothing to update, so we will save the invoice. The invoice saves. We'll take a look at the GL impact for this invoice. You'll see the recognition of revenue and accounts receivable in the sales order originating subsidiary. So now we have revenue in the subsidiary where the order was placed, and we have cost in the subsidiary where the order was shipped from. And that's where cross intercompany cross charges comes into play. So now we'll navigate to the intercompany cross charges workbench. And we'll do that by going to transactions, financial, 
and manage intercompany cross charges. The cross charge workbench gives you a list of all orders or transactions that have happened since the last time you processed the cross charges that would trigger a cross charge event to occur. In this case, the item fulfillment being shipped out of the Marvel subsidiary, even though the order was placed in DC distribution group, triggered the intercompany cross charge feature to, to process. We'll just go ahead and click generate transactions. And that will process the intercompany cross charges. Now that the cross charge workbench is empty, we'll know that all open cross charges have been processed and we can now go find the cross charge journals that were created. So here, cross charges number five and six were created, one for each subsidiary. And we'll open them to take a look. Cross charge number five recognizes the intercompany revenue on the books of Marvel supplier, the subsidiary that fulfilled the order. It recognizes revenue of $315. That's the $300 cost plus a 5% markup on transfer of inventory between subsidiaries. And it also has recognizes an accounts receivable to the DC distribution group of $315 as well. If we look at the second cross charge journal that was created, we'll see where we have now a accounts payable between DC distribution group and Marvel supplier of $315. And the, recogn the recognition of cost, in this case, it's going to an intercompany expense account of $315 as well. These balances can be closed in one of two ways, by an intercompany elimination or by paying or transferring funds to pay down the balances between subsidiaries. That concludes our intercompany cross item fulfillment and cross charges functionality overview. If you want to learn more, please reach out to GSI. We'll be happy to help.